Welcome to my channel. It's Tina at Tina Stitches. This is a channel primarily about cross stitch, but it can have some other crafts very rarely, but it can happen. Um, I do have a little bit of, well, lots of stitchy progress to show you. A little bit of life update, which is really not any update. I just wanted to keep you informed. Um, and no haul. I don't know if I said that yet or not, um, but plans. just to make sure. Um, I'm gonna try it without the ring light on because it, it bugs me that my glasses reflect the ring light. So I'm pretty sure there are versions of anti-glare that will not reflect the ring light but I don't have that. I have anti-glare, but anyways, um, yeah, today is March 6th, Sunday, 3 in the afternoon, and I have the house to myself, but only temporarily because part of the life update, um, my husband and son are taking his pellet stove over to his house. Now if you recall, way back last summer, um, my son had bought a house but the furnace broke and so we had to order a heat source and it took forever to come in. It kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed and it finally came in about a week maybe two weeks ago but because he hadn't been living there because he had no heat source the driveway had got piled up with snow so we had to get a guy over to remove the snow out of the way and then my son went over there and finished off with the steps with a shovel broke the shovel and uh, so now they can get into his house but now we have to move the pellet stove from our garage over to his house. A pellet stove is a source of heat that burns pellets. It's not good for a huge area, but his house is under, I'd say it's 900 square feet. So it would be a decent source. And yeah. So that's where we're at for that. But of course, now it's warming up. I mean, it was almost at freezing. Yeah, we're still below freezing, but we're heading towards zero. So that's a good sign. And of course, that means that he won't need it. <laughs> He won't need it as much, but the point is, I may get my craft room back. Yay. Um, that's where he's been lodging for the last year. Pretty close to a year. Yeah. So, let's get into stitching. Um, I did want to update you a little bit on Khaleesi. She is resting right now. Um, she's resting most of the time. She is my little dog that we got from a rescue society about three, three and a half, four years ago. And she was about four years old, they figured at the time. So she's about seven or eight years old now, but she has arthritis and it's pretty bad. She does not want to put any weight on her back legs. 
This started to be a problem last November. She wouldn't walk on the one leg, took her to the vet. He, it was a pulled tendon combined with arthritis. Well, now we have no weight bearing on both back legs. So, yeah, um, we don't think it's the pulled tendon anymore. It's just straight arthritis. She even, her front legs are tender as well. Um, I don't think it's gotten any worse in the last few weeks, but it's not any better. So we're going to adjust her meds again. We did buy her a little wheelchair. Um, the problem with that is she can't really use it around the house because we have a small house with stairs. <laughs> Um, so that could be a problem. I mean, the main floor, you go upstairs and the entry to go into the down steps for exiting the house and towards the basement, there is a, the, a gate there. So she would be okay on the main floor, but, um, the problem with putting a dog in a wheelchair is if they want to lay down, they can't they're stuck standing up on the front paws so it's really more for uh, we we plan on using it more in the summer when we want to take long walks outside which is kind of a catch-22 because the more she moves the better her flare-ups like the better she'll feel if she moves more but it hurts to move <laughs> it's it's a balancing act we did take her for a walk last night she made it about three houses and then she had to be carried luckily she only weighs eight pounds so carrying her around the block the rest of the way was not that big of an issue. So she uh, definitely, the other thing is she needs bath, but because of her arthritis, it's, but it, that will be a struggle. I'm not sure how we're going to manage that. She needs a bath and a haircut. Pretty bad. Anyways, you're here for the stitching, not for the puppies. So let's get into that. And first off, I must say welcome. If you're new, thank you for stopping by. I hope you like what you see. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. I hope, I hope you uh, enjoy what I'm stitching and can see the progress even if it's a little bit of progress. So what have I been working on? So March 1st is my oldest son's birthday. He is the one that is living with us right now and he does buy me stitchy stuff. He goes on to my 123 wish list and picks a few things because it's easy. Um, he and my husband are buying stuff at another store, which I don't have a wish list, a wish list at, so they guess, but they're doing pretty good. So this one was on my one, two, three wish list. It is Sampler 1823 by Perman of Copenhagen. And it's a kit. This is the floss. There's a lot more. There's a lot more floss than just that. Um, but that's the color it came with. White 35 count linen. A Zweigart, I think. Doesn't. Say, I'm sure I, I'm sure it does say somewhere 
Um, it's got the DMC logo, so it's DMC thread. I don't know if it actually says what color it is. But anyways, that's what it's supposed to look like. When I, I started in the center and did a little bit of this boat here. And uh, let's try to insert a picture here of where it was. And here it is now. <coughs> this, <is coughs> this is called to be stitched 2 over 2, but I started with 2 over 2 on this guy and I think I was thinking it was too dense and I didn't like it so I switched to one strand over two and that's where I am so you can see that guy is a little bit thick he's dense But this is basically the entire half upper part of that boat. And so there's the bottom part of the boat to be done. And there are letters all over this sampler that I don't know what it means. And it's repeated all over the place. I a N B N S. So I think I'm going to leave that out wherever I see it and uh, put other letters there. And I know I've had a hard time remembering what the name of this chart is, but when I looked it up last week on 123, it is sampler 1823 and it has 1823 in the middle right here. That's the boat I'm working on. So yeah, there's quite a bit left to do. And um, since it's my son's birthday month, I'm going to be picking this up more this month. It's probably going to be like two days a week on that and then the rest of the week on my whip go, which I did not do any of this week, but I did do my magazine monthly challenge theme piece which is English Garden Welcome by Teresa Wensler and that's what it's supposed to look like and this I picked for my theme because the theme of March which is Caroline's birthday month the theme is animals and there are swans in the pond And if I can find a picture of where I was, I will put it here. And this one has lots of, lots of hanging threads. But here's where it is now. That didn't work so great because it has black lines on it. Let's try something else. Okay. Here's where it is now. So 
I had the gazebo done and a little bit down and some of the purple done. But everything from this corner over is new and filling in in this direction typewriter style basically. Okay, sorry about that. So, yeah, this one I basically used the typewriter method to decide what color I was going to work on and worked it over and down. So I got the border. There's two colors around the edge. I did one color, came this way, and then filled in and just kept working this way till I got to this one where I was comfortable in that my stitching was correct and I could stitch this one without having to worry about pulling it out and having to move it because of a counting error. So the swan, the first swan X's are all done except for the beak. And I am parking as I'm going because I know I can use this color. The swan does not have blends, so I can just tuck it and cut it, but most of the rest of this is blends. So if I can use it again up here, then I will park it, wait until I'm at that point, and then bring it over and continue. So believe it or not, there was actually a lot more threads parked. And there's, there's a bunch tucked up in the corner there. So that's where it's at now. I probably, I don't count my stitches. Um, So I don't know how many stitches I did, but I got nine hours of work on it. I did work on this a lot yesterday. Needle Miner is a uh, brooch that I found at a Goodwill store. Thought it was perfect for a needle minder. So there's welcome. My next project that I worked on this week, and yes, it's only been a week. One week since my last video. Not bad. I worked on I started. This is a new start. I don't think I had it started last week. I had it planned. This is Sunflower Summer by Shepherd's Bush. This is an older chart. It is copyright 1994. This is almost as old as my oldest and older than my youngest. So it's kind of hard to see what it's supposed to look like, but I really wanted to work on more sunflowers because of Ukraine. Yeah. So I pulled some threads. It's called, it's charted to be stitched in silks. And I pulled some threads that I thought kind of mimic the picture and they're over dyed and I had dyed a piece of 32 count Belfast linen for my Victoria sampler project from a while ago and changed that so I still had this fabric so I started to stitch on it after I had pulled out 
the old stitching and here's where it's at so a couple of things after I had stitched this first row, the center row, I had questions about the colors. I thought, I'll just leave it for now. Um, this is a row of cherries. Those are specialty stitches, of course. This is full of specialty stitches. Of course. And this is supposed to be a crow, but I don't like the coverage. I am stitching it with one strand over two. I don't like the coverage for the cross stitch parts. There is some cross stitch on the rows, on the band of cherries, but that I, I think is fine because it's not a, it's not a full picture, basically. This picture looks like you can see through it too easily. So that's why I only stopped at the one. There are three on that row. So I think I'm going to be changing that. And the blue that I have, I have two blues. One of them is Summer Shower, which is a gray blue. But I I don't know if I like that one. The other one is a darker gray blue uniform blue and I don't think I like that one so I need to find another blue I really want to have a blue that is more in line with the Ukrainian colors so I need to look through my stash of over dyes and I might even just go with a DMC for that. Um, the problem with that is it might blend with this fabric, but we'll see. So that's my project that I work on at lunch. I have another one in here, which I did not work on. Now, for Beloved. This is my Heaven and Earth project. I work on it every morning before I go to work, except for Fridays because that's early day and I don't have time and here's what it's supposed to look like when it's finished mine is rolled up right now and I am near the bottom but I modified her ear so that it would be a human ear instead so yeah some people don't agree. They think it's beautiful as an elf. That it should have stayed as an elf, but it's my piece. It's going to be hanging up in my house. So I stitched a human. And here's where it was when I last showed it. And 
here's where we're at. So, I don't know if you can tell any difference, but I worked over here some more, of course, and over here some more. And I have finished three columns and am halfway through the fourth column. I am doing the columns on this side on the weekends and working in the dark areas over here on the weekdays before work. I just fill that in as much as I can. And then I come over here on the weekends and work on this because of the light colors. It's harder to work on this. Yeah. So most week days I can get about 120 to 150 stitches. I tried it. My goal is 22 minutes in the morning. And on the weekend, I can, I probably get an hour and a half to two hours, if not more. Um, and that will get me about 400 stitches. So, here's where it is now. I am trimming my away waist knots so they're not so messy. And yeah, I should look up my uh, stats where I am that I did do. My goal is to get 1400 a week. I got 1327. So that's, that's pretty close. I think my minimum is like 1200. So, you know, these are very loose goals, let's say. I am at 87.53% done. So I have 13, no, nope, twelve and a half percent left to go. Not bad. I forgot to show in my last video. I meant to show my uh, pattern that I am considering starting after this one is finished. I meant to insert a picture, but I didn't do that, and since I have this out. This is Inner Depths by Chris Ortega. And this is at the top of the list of next starts. I also have another Chris Ortega and I have Stitching Shelf. So yeah, but this is the one that I went and got a lot of the DMC for. And this is the other Chris Ortega I have in my stash. So that's it for whips one week four projects that's about normal for me um i have no haul no other announcements or anything um i am i don't know if i mentioned this i am suspending my black needle society subscription i've paid for two so i should be getting two more but I think 
that I will not be getting the Christmas in July. I think that's the one where I've cut off. I should be, I believe I'll be getting the steampunk box and one more. I don't know. I've paid for two more. So the problem is I need to cut down on my spending or it's not exactly cut down. I don't really spend that much on my stitching, but I find the Black Needle Society box is not 100% me. It's a hit and miss and it's kind of clicky to be getting it. So it was, that was kind of what enticed me to it. But I don't see myself using everything in every box. Not everything has impressed me. Um, I mean, the fabrics and the threads are gorgeous. That's I think that's what I want more of is fabric, threads, beads, charms, um, that kind of thing. Um, the rest of it, you know, the tea, the glasses, the sparklers, those are... I, I don't need those in my stitching or armory, right? So, so I've suspended it because I did join a different club, which is a thread of the month club. And I should be, it's a new thread of the month club. So I got in as soon as I could and <clears throat> it's Canadian and I'm Canadian. So I'll save on the shipping and they've had good reviews. And so we'll see. Um, what is it called now? <laughs> of course, I should have wrote it down. Roxy's. Roxy's Floss Club through Caroline at Off the Grid Needle Arts, her store, Evertones. See, I knew it would come to me. So that's the um, transition that I've done. I've, I'm paying for both of the colorful and neutrals. So we'll see. Um, I think I mentioned in my last video that we went off to get our kitchen um, priced out, basically designed and priced out. Um, they're still working on that, but I need to watch what I'm spending because that's a big expense that I need to budget for. So that and, you know, Khaleesi's medicine and, you know, possibly special dog food and all of that stuff. But we haven't, we haven't gone to special dog food yet. I don't know. I don't know if there really is any for joint relief, but I'm sure, I'm sure somebody makes something. Um, yeah, so that's really all that I have today. Um, so this should be a pretty short video. And yeah, I look forward to getting the details on my Smalls Exchange with the Stitch and Stuff, Kim and Sarah. And also, I forgot to mention in my last video and the video before that, but I wanted to say happy birthday to Sarah at our Stitching Kingdom and congratulations for hitting a thousand subscribers. That's fantastic. I'm so surprised that you haven't reached that way before me. That was, we were quite even for quite a long time. And so I'm so happy for you. It's great. Um, 
I did watch a couple of new subscribers and I should have I should have wrote them down um, the stitching cousins are a fantastic duo um, I don't think they're at a thousand so there's my under the well, under 1000 sub club recommendation stitching cousins I will try to link them in the uh, description box below. And I need to make notes about more of them because I know there are some. That uh, was recommended to us during a Zoom meetup by Linda, I believe. And it was good. They're fun to watch. Um, I think they're relatively new to stitching. And uh, it, it's fun to watch them discover and realize new stitching things. So, anyways, I'm going to go now, uh, clean this up, upload it, <clears throat> try to <clears throat> try to edit a little bit. I'm not sick. I just have a frog in my throat. So I guess that means that I've talked enough. So I'm going to go. Um, yeah. Praying for all the people in Ukraine. I really hope this gets resolved very soon. I have been I have been shopping the Etsy Ukrainian designer sites. Um, so I'm going to plug that. Um, Jan Hicks at Jan Hicks Creates has a blog and she has a list of legitimate Ukrainian designers that you can go check out. I will try to, I will try to find that and link it below. I'm going to put a note here about that so that I remember. So, yeah, until next time, which could be a week, could be two, could be three, who knows. Um, yeah, happy stitching. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time. Bye. Good girl. What about you? Mm -hmm. What is that? No. No. Keeping mommy's chair warm. Hey.